I'm very excited. At last in this spring, I've got plants which are out in flower to be able to talk about to you. These are all spring beauties that love it in the shade. Hello, I'm Rosie and this is Rosie Hardy Gardening. Let's start with the blue one here. This is Omphalodes Cherry Ingram. Beautiful forget-me-not like blue flowers with fabulous pale green, lime green foliage at this time of the year. Now this is a semi evergreen. It makes a wonderful mat in a shady area, edge of a border, underneath shrubs, underneath trees. Then in the spring, it's got dead brown leaf on it. You can give it a little bit of a haircut back and then hey presto, at the same time as all of this mass of blue flowers is coming up, you get this super foliage. So the flowers will come up and they'll be a Above here, they last for a good six weeks. They are pollinator friendly. You'll get all sorts of good, interesting insects coming to uh, feed off them. Once the flowers have finished, the foliage takes over and creates a wonderful mat. And it's quite close to the ground. It's not much more with its foliage than about four or five inches, 20, 25 centimeters, mm, probably with the flowers, the flowers go above the foliage. Once it's finished flowering, dies back down, you get the foliage as a beautiful mat and it stays quite dense, which means you don't get other weeds and other plants coming up through it. Really good for ground cover underneath your shrubs and flowering naturally in the spring. Another really good one, which is gonna be a little bit lower, is this one, the Begenia, Begenia Bark. Now, Begenia Bark is one of the newer breedings. It means that it stays much more as a clump forming Begenia, has beautiful rounded purple tinged leaves through the winter months, and then gradually those die back and the flowers come through. This is a beautiful pale pink flower on a stem there. It's going to come up and eventually be at about 20 centimetres high, six inches, and then the foliage will get bigger and bigger, it will get glossier, it will get greener, and it'll make a lovely round mat. These are easy to lift and divide, and you can do that in the autumn. Fantastic on the edge or underneath trees and shrubs, but it loves a shady spot. The shady spot that it will like, it can go slightly moister, or it can go slightly drier. Forgot to say that about the Omphalodes. So the Omphalodes will tolerate a bit of dry shade, but again, it really doesn't matter if it gets a little bit moist. And that tends to be what our springs are like here at the UK at the moment. So this is great. This is also divisible, but usually after flowering. The Begenia, we're talking about dividing it in August, September time, and then you can move it around. Really good with its leaf for later on. Then we come to Lamium, and this particular one is Brightstone Pearl. This is slightly different from other Lamiums that you get in that its flowers are always upright. It creates a lovely round clump and it has these beautiful pink flowers and lovely buds on here coming through. This is only just starting to come into flower and you can see what it's gonna look like. It's gonna go up a fraction more just under a foot when it's in flower, really beautiful, full of flower, fantastic plant, loves the shady spot, will tolerate damp or slightly drier. And then once the flowers are finished, you can give it a haircut back and then you will get the foliage staying as a really good mat. The foliage has a little silver line down the center of it, so it is of interest as well. And this is something that you can propagate either by division or you can take cuttings from it if you want to, but a really super form. So this is Lamium Brightstone Pearl, just slightly different way. It's not gonna run off and be carpeting like a lot of other Lamiums are. It is much more of a round clump former. As I'm talking about these plants, I would just like to say that my nursery, the online store, is available for mail order. Plants come in and out of availability depending on the season. Our mail order team works hard to make sure that everything reaches you safely and in good condition. If you're in the UK, have a look at the link below. Moving on, we have some other wonderful plants that also like to be in shady spots. This one, Leucogen, 
and this one is Grave Tide Giant. This is going to get quite large, somewhere between 30 and 45 centimeters. That's a foot and 18 inches in height with the flower. The flowers are fantastic and they've got these wonderful green tips to them as well. They're related to the snowdrop, but they come out just that bit later. They do like heavy soils. They do like to be somewhere where it's moister. So that is really great. You get this lovely strap-like foliage on them and they are divisible. They do come from a bulb so you can once they have finished flowering, as with Galanthus, the snowdrop, you can lift them in the green, split them up and move them around. Really useful late, uh, late spring flowering and just a cracking colour. You know, when they are white like this with this green tip, just in a shady spot, they show up. And with having something which is a contrast in both flower shape and leaf shape makes the spring borders look so much different it also means that you get good continuity. So this is Leucogen Grave Tie Giant. The last two I've got prefer it slightly drier. And this beautiful little Primula, Primula elata, has cracking soft yellow flowers. It is a clump former. And the beauty of this one is that it is a UK native. Now, one thing that people don't realize with this is, if you see a wild patch of this in woodlands, it denotes that you are in an ancient woodland. There are one or two places in the UK you can see this actually growing and naturalized, and that means you are in a beautiful ancient woodland. Now you can buy plants yourself, put them into a shady area, slightly drier, it doesn't want to be too wet, and under deciduous trees or deciduous shrubs, and then just allow them to naturalize. Let them drop their seed and you will get lovely young seedlings and you'll get clumps there. You can then move the seedlings around. That's by far the easiest way to allow them. Allow them to naturalize. Just beautiful for this time of the year. And so much flower on here, it's going to continue for four or five weeks now and it's not going to get too tall. So it's only going to make about six inches or 20 centimeters and about the same around. It's not a spreader, it's a cell seeder, but slowly cell seeding. The last one, which is going to get quite tall, is this beautiful Doronicum Harper Crew. Huge, big, beautiful daisy flowers on this. Really stunning. Now the flowers start to open at a slightly lower point here. And then you can see on this stem that is coming up here, there is a bud following behind on this leaf. On this leaf, there is another bed bud coming up here. So this plant is going to go up and up and up. And it will eventually, when it's in full flower, be somewhere around between two and three feet. So that's 60 to 90 centimeters in height. It is a spreader, but a slow spreader. So it will put on off shoots out the side here and gradually get bigger and make a really lovely clump. Now this will go in shade or sun, but it's better in a shady spot. Drier, sometimes moisture if, if you can give it that. It has a square stem, so it holds itself well. It doesn't flop over, which is great. And this foliage stays low so the foliage won't get much above six to eight inches 20 to 25 centimeters after two to three years probably a spread of two feet 60 centimeters and then the flowers are going to go up and be really tall so it starts low it's a ray of sunshine in these gray spring days and it's going to keep on going keep on flowering and it'll still be in flower once you get into may really fantastic good old fashioned cottage garden perennial. Now, if I put all of these plants together, you will be able to see things and I will try and put them in a sort of pattern whereby they would actually grow in a border for you like this. And then that would be really great to be able to have them in those sorts of arrangement. So this would give us a lovely early spring border. Consider that I am the tree or the shrub. They're getting shade over here. They're going to create, they, they would need a little bit more spacing than this if they were actually in a proper setting. So you'd be more that sort of space allowing them to grow. But from the point of view of showing you 
what they look like together. If I just do that, you have got a beautiful array. Uprights, rounds, low, pinks, yellows, whites, and blue. As mentioned, some of these are available on my nursery website. Please check the link below. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel.